AMP brownstone for three blind men and an elephant, and I'm really tired. <coughs> I'm going to uh, use my laptop where I've written extensive notes, forgive me, but I wanted to get this out to you as quickly as possible. Um, I was overwhelmed yesterday by Sony's shooting event for the new A9. Uh, so I thought I might have some fun with my insomnia and uh, hope you don't mind my homage to the movie Thief starring James Caan, uh, the original 1984 TV series Miami Vice by Michael Mann, and the music of Tangerine Dream and uh, Jan Hammer respectively. Now, more than 5,000 images later, uh, most of which I have not reviewed yet on my computer, it's already clear to me that the A9 is, in fact, uh, a top-of-the-heap DSLR slayer uh, on the one hand, and candidly, uh, a disappointment to those who wanted more uh, or expecting more, hoping for more, both in terms of video capability and radically new uh, body, uh, radically new ergonomics and menuing. In other words, the A9 is a perfect three blind men and an elephant story. Now, for those of you who don't know the story of the three blind men and an elephant, the parable, uh, I'm going to tell it to you. And for those of you who do, please forgive the, uh, the extra minute or two. So, three blind men bump into an elephant. One bumps into the leg, thinks it must be a tree. Another one bumps into the trunk, thinks it must be a snake. And the third one bumps into the tail, he's a little bit slower, and figures it's a broom. Now, there are variants of this story with as many as six blind men, but whether it's three, four, five, or six, the points are the same, beginning with one man's subjective truth might not be another's, and neither subjective truth may be the actual truth. This is the curiosity which informs everything I do. I want to understand the totality of what it is that I'm seeing. So, let me just preface uh, my next comments by saying that the speed of the A9 is mind-blowing. This is continuous shooting right now. You're shooting right now. This is insane. The image quality is stellar, including the image quality generated not just with the two G Masters with which I already have some familiarity, the 24-70 and 70-200 but I was able to go hands-on for a little bit with the 100 to 400, 4.5 to 5.6 G Master, and it is. So I just told one of my first ones to go again. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, and the physical ergonomics, the EVF and battery life are all improved within the current form factor of the A7 series. Oh, 28%, and we're already closing in on the end of the day. One battery. But that's not what's most interesting to me. What's most interesting to me is the intent of the A9. So today I'm going to talk about that images and footage coming soon. First and foremost, the A9 is about conquest sales, about taking market share from Canon and Nikon, and it begins with brilliant marketing and positioning. By that I mean how Sony chooses to frame the argument and how it sets its price. It begins with specs that crush uh, the champions uh, where they are strong, and in fact this is just a warm-up to the main event, which is attacking the champions' strengths. Uh, and in this regard, Sony is taking a page out of the Canon playbook which, when it introduced the EOS series, took on Nikon and beat them by going into the most demanding, uh, arguably most expensive, and halo market segment in photography there is, professional sports. Uh, but Sony has gone further, uh, engaging the best of that segment, guys like uh, Pulitzer Prize winner Brian Smith, uh, who won for his photograph of Olympian uh, Greg Louganis hitting his head on the diving board as he came down. Uh, and by the way, Brian is just a really nice guy. Uh, and ponying up uh, to professional level support as Sony announced 
uh, in their global press conference, uh, opening up walk-in service centers for a start in LA, in New York. And then fascinatingly, appropriating image-making heritage where I guess they felt, one, they didn't have enough of their own, and two, where it would most directly undermine the DSLRs. And that was, or is by using Leica's heritage, the decisive moment of Henri Cartier-Bresson, the size of the Leica rangefinder. These two things have been circulating through Sony's communications now for months, and they really played upon both of these in the press conference. But at the same time, uh, Sony is attacking the champion's weakness, which is price. So what they've done is dramatically undercut the price of the 1DX2 and the uh, D5 for a price of $4,500 versus more like $6,000 for the other two, uh, and use those specs to deliver over-the-top performance defined in a way that's favorable to Sony. Um, just like the original Jaguar XKE, a tremendous sports car, tremendous acceleration, gorgeous, and oh, let's not talk about reliability. In the case of Jaguar, uh, whose lack of uh, reliability became legendary. In the case of Sony, really, uh, the two bugaboos have been professional support and ergonomics, and Sony has made moves in those direction, uh, directions. But the DSLR uh, support system and ergonomics uh, still exceed that of Sony as of this video. Which leads me to this. Uh, it's tough to be a camera manufacturer these days. When you look at the trajectory of traditional camera sales, the absolute abyss, if you refuse to acknowledge what is already happening, uh, is within what I'll call all corporate strategy departments planning horizon. Uh, that, that cliff is just uh, inescapable. Everyone uh, in the camera manufacturing business faces it and they handle it in different ways. From Samsung choosing to exit the traditional camera business altogether to uh, Nikon which has just been surpassed for a couple of months uh, as the number two spot for uh, market share uh, in the, the market. Uh, to heritage stalwarts from Leica to Hasselblad and others. And then by configuring the A9 the way it has, going after the strongest argument for remaining in the DSLR camp, which is speed, which is something that Sony is uniquely competent at through its sensor tech, uh, yet refusing to invest and risk taking on the entire industry uh, by dramatically upping their IBIS technology, uh, software, ergonomics, and the lens lineup, uh, nor putting in anything uh, into the A9, unnecessary to achieve the goal of unseating Canon and Nikon DSLRs at the top of the pyramid and potentially cannibalizing Sony's own high margin, low volume, interchangeable lens dedicated video recorders. Uh, Sony lives to fight another day, uh, bring us more innovation in a manageable way, and help us face the fact that, in the end, it's less about the gear than our skill anyway. Hold that thought. Um, I want to make another point. For those of you who are still doing it, stop smirking or talking smack about smartphones as legitimate uh, professional image making tools because the fact is that the sensor technology in this new 24 megapixel sensor comes straight from Sony's experience with smartphones and that's not the only tech that will lead from there. Uh, computational imaging in the form of dual camera smartphones like Apple's iPhone 7 Plus and the imminently shipping light L16, uh, that, that technology is here now, that is computational imaging. Uh, smartphone autofocus already exceeds that of well-known and even new cameras, more of that coming in another piece. And uh, like the A9's brand new sensor, these other smartphone attributes will inform top of the food chain dedicated camera design forevermore, and vice versa. So here's the bottom line 
Again, more stuff coming in the days and weeks. The A9 is gobsmackingly fast. Uh, the image quality is fantastic. Uh, the autofocus is extraordinary. Uh, I'm betting that beyond basic image quality, low light performance may be even better than the uh, A7S II. Here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking it would be easy to say that it's somewhere between the A7S II and the A7R II um, because it's got a sensor sized in between those two versus 12 and 42. This is 24. And so the uh, pixel size will be larger, allowing more light in. But this is the same technology being used in the RX100 Mark V and the RX10 Mark III. One inch sensors which punch way above their weight class. So to be determined. But the bottom line is also that the ergos could still be better. The menu system is still circa 1980. Uh, and the touch interface is still a couple of generations behind the best in the business today. Um, now, I also want to say that Brian Smith won that Pulitzer 30 years before the A9 was launched. And the point of that is, with that kind of talent, he didn't need the A9 to capture the decisive moment. And while I personally had an incredible number of usable shots, there were still times when the A9's autofocus capabilities did not exceed my ability to mess up the shot. In other words, there's no such thing as magic uh, other than technology not yet understood. And I still have a lot to learn about this camera. Anyway. If you liked what you've seen here today, yes, it's hard to like precisely what you've seen today. Maybe I should say if you like what you've heard today, uh, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, join the conversation below. I, I'm just blown away. I keep telling anyone who will listen that the quality of thought, uh, the experience, the humor, uh, the helpfulness of three blind men and an elephant YouTube viewers is just exceptional. And uh, thank you for that. Uh, and if you're so inclined, support what we do by using our affiliate links below. Uh, thanks for that. For Three Blind Men and an Elephant, I'm Hugh Brownstone. I'm going back to bed. <laughs>